Are we doing a channel update? Are we doing a channel update? Are we doing a channel update? First channel update. I thought I might as well do a little catching up. It's a pretty busy holiday season and it's a new year and uh, yeah I just want to keep all you folks in the loop. I have some really exciting news. Uh, some really cool things are in the works right now and uh, yeah I want to tell you folks about that too. So first off bad news over the holidays uh, my, my truck broke down my GMC um, so I was left without a vehicle for a couple days. Uh, I ended up filming, filming a video in town. Uh, put a link right here. It was pretty fun, I went skiing, just walked through there and went skiing, it was really cool. Um, but yeah, anyways, truck broke down without a vehicle. Now I have a new one. Um, went from full size pickup truck to uh, a Honda CRV. Uh, it's new to me, it's still old, but it's still new to me. Uh, anyways, way better on gas. And that's really exciting. It's more reliable. I'm uh, more confident uh, going on the highway with it just because I know it's not going to leave me stranded somewhere. Anyways, as a result of that, it's really a good thing. Uh, as a result of that, um, I'm going to be able to go further for trips, for videos, um, just to do more stuff. I, I can afford to go further with fuel and everything too. So that's really exciting to look forward to. And um, yeah cool new wheels it's always fun getting a new vehicle exciting eh? not paying for it but uh, that driving it part of organize this time got notes it was yeah because I got a Honda CRV one thing was really important that either had four a four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive hybrid no no and so one thing that's really important when I was picking a new vehicle is that it had four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive there's a lot of snow here uh, the winters can be pretty rough uh, it can even be a challenge driving in the city when uh, the plaza haven't had a chance to get out yet. So that's really important. Uh, it's not as heavy duty as the truck was with full and 4x4, but it's still uh, still better than getting around with a two wheel drive. Uh, so yeah. Um, the other thing to think about the winter season, I mean, winter uh, is here. It's uh, a little mild compared to normal, but it's here. Uh, the lakes are frozen. Uh, there's ice out in some parts of Lake Superior that I visit, which is really exciting. And uh, because of that, I've been playing some really cool trips for skis. Um, <clears throat> I want to do some things that are a little longer, a little further away, a little bigger, uh, deeper into the bush. Uh, so I do want to do some hot skiing. Uh, there's some really, uh, there's a really good uh, ski resort around where I live, uh, and they have these huts that you can ski to uh, with stoves in them. You can uh, spend the night and that sort of stuff. So I want to try doing that by myself, um, or with somebody else. But I, I think I'd like to do a solo overnight here that way. It'd be really cool, cabin in the woods sort of thing. Um, so I love skiing there. Um, I also want to go up to Lake Superior Park and to ski some of the more popular picnic sites that are closed right now. Uh, you can't drive down them, so I figure the skis go downhill to the lake. It'd be a lot of fun. Uh, I just gotta find somebody brave enough uh, to do it with me, and with the right equipment, of course, right too. So um, that might be a little challenging. Um, what else is going on this winter? I want to do some more winter camping too. I wouldn't mind using uh, my uh, my super shelter a few times. Uh, Joe said he could use a stove too, one of his hot uh, tent stoves. So that's really exciting. I chose the best. Um, so. Anyways, yeah, I might be able to bring Brittany here first time winter camping if I do that. Uh, she wants to try it out, but she wants to try a uh, hot tent the first time. Something like that. Um, then what do you folks want to see? I mean, uh, uh, winter's long here. I mean, I'm going to be able to do skiing and snowshoeing, all that sort of stuff. Uh, well into March, maybe even April if I'm lucky. Um, so what do you folks want to see? Do you want to see more skiing? Do you want to see uh, snowshoeing? Do you want to see more bushcraft, more camping, uh, more stuff like this where I'm telling you what's going on in my life? and the channel, uh, more of Hibbert. <laughs> Eric used a little more of Hibbert. <laughs> Isn't that right? Yeah. So yeah, uh, leave some comments uh, below and uh, yeah, tell me some ideas, things you like, people want to see, things I've done that you enjoy. I can do some more of that. Um, I really enjoyed um, my uh, quiet winter walk in the summer, quiet walk in the summer winter woods. Anyways, I filmed it uh, Kind of ambient music. Folk, try to focus a lot on audio and stuff. Uh, not much talking. Um, 
I had a lot of fun doing that. I like talking to you guys too and uh, telling what's going on, but sometimes it's nice to just relax and just kind of show my perspective and what the experience is like. Anyways, I like doing those. So if you folks say you want to see more of those, I'd be really happy. I'm really happy doing anything really, because it's all a lot of fun. Since I'm on the topic of winter and skiing, you folks know that I'm pretty um, into skiing right now. <laughs> Cross country skiing, as I say, I really enjoy it. Just waiting all summer for it. Uh, so I have uh, my quiver of skis. I'm by no means an expert, but I can kind of show you what I have and what I use them for and what I think are their strengths and weaknesses. So my first ski I'm going to show you folks. These are my Pelton and skis. I used these all last season. Um, yeah, they're very skinny and long. And uh, they're meant for racing. I got them from my dad. I believe they're from the late 70s. Um, he used to uh, ski race quite a bit, so I think he picked these up when he had a pair of skis break. But apparently they're really cool at the time because they have this javelin, uh, javelin tip and that gives you a lot of play so the ski can work over the crust and stuff like that. Anyways, I used these all last season because I, I didn't have much money to invest in skiing at the time and uh, they got me around. I was really lucky because there's a crust. I could uh, skate ski with these which is really nice. They're narrow, uh, really light, sporty feel to them. Uh, one thing about these is they have to be they have to be used with this S and S binding. So these boots are also very old. They're from the 70s or very early 80s. Um, that's one thing to be noted with these. And one thing I really like about these skis, which is going to sound weird at the moment, but uh, they don't have metal edges. And you think, oh, which were you thinking? Uh, you do like, a lot of backcountry skiing. Why would you want metal edges? Well, when skijoring with Hibbard. Uh, I don't want to have metal edges. Uh, that's one thing that you don't want to do while skijoring is have metal edges in your skis because uh, they're sliding really quickly, the dog stops, you can cut your dog up pretty bad. So these are the only pairs of skis I can use um, while going in the uh, My other two pairs of skis have metal edges, which are really nice for turning on ice and, and getting a little more control when you're doing some downhill stuff. Um, but yeah, you can only do so many things at once. Uh, these skis too, these probably be what I use if I go to uh, somewhere you can go skiing on a track like a uh, Groom Trails. I probably use these or my uh, next pair of skis there. Anyways, I really like these. They're awesome. They're old technology. They got that kind of uh, retro look, a little bit of nostalgia there. Um, and yeah, they got me through uh, last winter really nice. At the end of last winter, Ray is a snow mountain. I got a new pair of skis, something more specialized to what I do. And you folks would have seen these too. I can put a link to the, my favorite video with them up here. Um, and these are Rosenel ski. Uh, they're the BC 59. And it, that's pretty skinny for a backcountry ski. Uh, but they do have some features that make them distinguish as backcountry. They have metal edges, so they get a little better for downhill turns. Uh, they have a fish scale pattern on the bottom too, which uh, this makes for a little bit less maintenance. You'll have to bring wax around. And I find they do, they, they climb pretty good. They have some pretty good grip on them. And uh, they're, a bit, they're a bit wider than uh, the classic skis. So that's nice too. You get a little more flotation. And they're just a, a smidge shorter, uh, more of a blunt tip on these things. Um, and yeah. They're pretty wicked. They're uh, kind of the next step into that. I almost call these like a, a touring ski where you can go in track or you can go off track a little bit. I know these are really frustrating. Uh, same with the classic skis if you're into thick bush and you're getting tangled in trees and that sort of stuff. It's makes one swear of it. <laughs> so yeah, these are, uh, I really like these ones for, um, you know, if there's some powder and stuff you need some flotation, but I really like them if, uh, there's the train's fairly flat. Um, you can get some nice glide with these, with these two, so they still feel like a ski, and uh, yeah, you move around pretty good on flat ground. Wetlands and stuff like that, I've got some plans for these with wetlands. Yeah. Those Rosendals also use the same sort of binding and ski boot as my, uh, my classic uh, skis, uh, the Peltonets. Um, so that's one kind of thing. I need to invest in some warmer boots, some newer boots. But these are getting me by for now. Alright, now on to the newest ones. I think you folks who have seen these, I've used these quite a bit. 
uh, just recently. And these are the Altai Hawk. As you can see, they're quite a bit shorter than our skis. And uh, I think these are kind of qual classified as something between a ski and a snowshoe. I mean, they're, they're short in stature, very wide, lots of flotation with these. And they also have uh, a mohair, artificial mohair uh, backing here. So instead of having uh, grip wax or scales, these will go smoothly, gust the snow one way, and then when you push up, they really grip up. It's kind of like a, almost like a velvet or something like that. I don't know if you've ever felt milk before, but it's, yeah. Very nice, very smooth, actually. It's kind of nice. Another cool thing about these um, is that they have a built-in binding. So I can wear these while I'm wearing them. So that's really nice because uh, what I do, you know, I ski somewhere, I, I get all my skis, I, I get some wood, make a fire, cook something or whatever. Um, ski boots aren't really meant for walking around like that, but these are. So these are nice, where I can just pop out, ready and go. Um, and that's really cool. I think these bindings are probably giving me a little more heavy duty control than the light SNS bindings that have in there, two skis. Um, but I've heard you can put three pin uh, bindings in these too, which are uh, used for telemark and you can get some really good uh, control on them. Um, the thing a little bit you get used to, you sit a little further close, uh, you sit a little closer to the tip on these with your bindings. So sometimes we're inclined to lean forward like on uh, in these more traditional style of skis. These ones will pop me into the crust and I'll fall, which is fun too. Um, so that's kind of an adaption. I've seen people using a single pole when uh, going around in these things and uh, I think it's called Tiak or something. And then you can kind of like lean back in the pole going downhill like you're driving an outboard motor on a, on a boat and kind of scoot around that way and use it as a form of control. So I might try that out. One thing that's kind of a bummer with these uh, compared to the other skis is that they uh, don't have much glide. Because they have so much grip and they have so much flotation, they just don't have the same glide as the other skis. Uh, it, but keep in mind, Compared to snowshoes, they have infinitely more glide. So I mean, it's like a very slow ski or a very, very fast snowshoe. It's still faster than a snowshoe, which I, I really dig. I gotta take these on some steeper inclines and stuff to see how they climb, uh, see if I can really kind of just abandon the whole snowshoe uh, situation to use these instead. Oh, that reminds me. My snowshoes broke last year. I put them in for warranty work. It didn't go through, so I do not have snowshoes right now. Brittany said I can use hers, which is really nice, but we can't go snowshoes together. So that's kind of a bummer. So until I get another pair, these are going to be supplementing. I might borrow uh, Brittany's snowshoes once in a while too, but uh, I'll probably be using a lot of these. Just not with Hibbert, my ledges. Let me see, I'm getting off topic. Check my notes. Well, all this talk. I want to go skiing now. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Kind of funny. I'm actually going to be going out filming another adventure tomorrow. I took last week on off from filming, so I want to do this sort of thing. Please make a video for your folks. I might throw in some cool time lapses and then there if you want to check it out. And just, yeah, have a nice time there. Um, oh, the good news. So this is really exciting. Um, I was kind of stepped outside of YouTube a little bit with the, uh, this video work and doing these adventures and I now have my own TV show on my local TV network um, which is with Shaw. I don't know if you've heard of Shaw TV, Shaw Internet. Uh, anyways they have our local Channel 10 uh, TV station uh, and they're starting to air Bush Track Bush episodes which is really cool. They came in and approached me and then uh, said that hey we'd like to have your content on our, on our uh, station and I said sure why not <laughs> I'd love to be on TV. So yeah, that's going on. Um, basically, a lot of the episodes are very similar to where on YouTube, but they're on, on Shaw, and I have to change over some of the music and a few things to make them okay for TV, uh, that sort of stuff. Um, which really was really cool, because they let me use this music they're licensed to use. It has like professional ambient music and cinematic music. It's, it's, it's really nice. It's really nice. I'm getting spoiled with it, actually. <laughs> so that's really cool. Um, I have... My first solo overnighter is uh, the episode they're airing right now, and then they're also putting uh, one of my recent skiing videos on soon, and then I have another one in the works I'm sending to them. Um, that's pretty neat. So if you folks uh, are interested in checking out and you aren't from the area, uh, they do have a YouTube channel, so if you want to see the difference in the videos and stuff, I'll put a link down below. 
Um, it's a Shaw Community uh, Spotlight. And uh, the Community Link. There's another thing called the Community Link. But if you look up uh, Shaw Community Spotlight or uh, Shaw and Boosh, I'll pop up. Um, give them a subscription. They're starting a new service there. They're really trying to focus on the local content uh, for localities and just have people that are creators making videos for TV. So why not, right? Um, another cool thing is, uh, besides Shaw, I've also started working with a website called The Positive Suit. And that, this is really cool. It's a website that's all about uh, just kind of representing Sioux St. Marie, where I live, uh, positively talking about the good things, the awesome things that can be done around here, food, outdoor stuff, uh, all sorts of like uh, pop culture scenes and stuff like that too. Uh, it's pretty neat. It's just starting out and I'm going to be doing a lot of their uh, outdoors uh, videos and stuff like that. Um, they have to be a little bit shorter for them, so I do have some stuff that's similar to on YouTube. Uh, but cut down my shorter, kind of taking out some of the chaff and uh, just straight to the point sort of deal. So uh, if you folks want to check them out and see what Sioux St. Marie is all about or just hear about what's going in the community if you're from here, uh, I'll have a link for that down below as well. Um, yeah, they're really awesome people. They came to talk to me and uh, asked if I wanted to help and I said, sure, I'll see what I can do. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm doing a little bit of that too. So with all this stuff going on, I mean, it's a lot of fun, it's very rewarding, but I'm very busy too. So I'm going to do my best to put out a video every week, but once in a while, I may miss a week, maybe uh, once every two weeks if things get really crazy, but uh, if you really miss me, you can come check out to these other uh, YouTube channels or uh, come watch Channel 10 Shaw if you're from Sault Ste. Marie, and uh, you can come find me that way too. But I'm going to do my best to be consistent, because consistency is important. <laughs> yeah. um, let's see. Ibber, don't knock over the skis. Well, that's about a wrap. Um, I want to thank all of you for watching this video, checking out. I mean, um, I, I really, it's been a crazy uh, journey being on YouTube. Uh, all the support you folks give me, um, all the advice, everything, it's, it's amazing. I mean, um, I've come out of this, I've, I've learned so much. I, I've been on so many more trips than I'd normally be on. I, I've um, learned how to make videos, learned how to edit videos, and it's just, it's just wicked, you know, if it weren't for you folks, I, maybe I wouldn't be doing this. Maybe I wouldn't have a TV show, you know, this is, this is, this is good. This is good. Thank you. Thank you all for watching. Happy trails. Hey puppies. Hi puppies. Are you being a bad girl because the camera's on? Yeah. Am I talking like a weirdo?